right, so I am excited today. I have Scott Lim, the CEO of Masterworks on, and we're gonna talk a little bit about crowdfunded fine art, which is uh, kind of a new, unique thing that was new to me. And, um, you know, and Scott's team reached out. And uh, anyway, so we get to kind of chat about this. And I'm trying to think of the best way to kind of start this conversation. So I've done a review about Fundrise. And I think people can understand or, you know, the crowdfunded real estate thing has been around, you know, for a few years. And I think some people have gotten that. Um, but you guys are doing crowdfunded fine art. So maybe do a compare and contrast, if you will, between the two. Sure. Yeah. So Fundrise is actually a very uh, comparable company to Masterworks. Um, Dan, who is one of the founders of Fundrise, is actually an advisor for Masterworks. But gotcha. we're, we're doing um, a very similar model to what they are, except that we're using blue chip art rather than real estate as, as the main asset that investors can invest in. Gotcha. Okay. Um, all right. So this begs like just tons of questions. Um, so let's start with you. I'm assuming you have some sort of background in investing in art. Is that true? Yeah. So my background has really been in starting technology companies as well as uh, investing in art for maybe the past 15, 20 years. Um, so I think it's this really interesting, unique asset class that has historically outperformed uh, the S&P is uncorrelated, but the only way to invest in it is if you have a couple million dollars to buy a painting. So it's, this, it's, it's, a, it's a very interesting asset class, but also very inaccessible at the same time. All right. Um, okay. So let's talk about the thing that a lot of people are interested in. So you mentioned um, the has beaten the S and P for the last ten or fifteen years. I don't know what you said specifically. I read on the site that you guys uh, was it the was it was it the Wall Street Journal or somebody was talking about in two thousand eighteen. This was the best performing um, asset class. Um, what? Uh, yeah. So I mean, as a new a new investor to this, I mean, me, this is a new idea to me. Um, I'm thinking, all right, what can I expect in terms of returns? Now, I know um, from very, very little about art, but I know that that seems like a generally wildly volatile market. Am I incorrect in that or are there averages to kind of assume? Well, I, I, think, I, think, um, I think you think about the art market very similar to any other market. So very high level, the way to think about art today is that there's approximately $1.7 trillion in assets. Um, and these okay. are really paintings that sit between ultra high net worth collectors' homes. And that's a number that's, that's published by Deloitte. Um, out of that, this year, somewhere between 60 and $70 billion in art will sell. Mm -hmm. So there's different, there's different segments within the art market. What we like to focus on is something that we, we refer to as the blue chip segment. And we very narrowly define the blue chip segment as art created by the top 100 most selling artists. So gotcha. if you look at just the top 100 artists, and Picasso is the number one, the number one of those 100, but if you look at the top 100 artists, um, approximately 62% of the market overall um, from, a, from a dollar perspective is related to those, those top 100 artists. So you have a very gotcha. few number of artists that control the majority um, of the value. And, and within that segment, we actually think the volatility is reasonably low. Yeah. So if you invest in a Monet today, um, our data shows the likelihood of that painting selling for less than what you, you purchase it for um, at some point in the future is less than 10%. Yeah. So, so you have this very, very interesting asset class that, 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 that does appreciate quite well with reasonable low levels of volatility. Yeah. Okay. So I would liken that to, um, you know, saying that stocks are wildly volatile as you have penny stocks that are, and then you have blue chip stocks like your, your reference that are much more stable and the likelihood of you losing all your money on them is very slim. Um, okay. So that makes sense to me. Uh, because yeah, like in my mind, I've always just thought of, you know, investing in art is, you know, you have no idea what's going to happen. And a lot of people think that about stocks until they actually understand you got to, you know, sort them into different categories and treat them as such. Right. Yeah. It, you know, and a, and a lot of people ask me the question, which I, I, I don't have any data to support this, but this is just sort of a, um, a hunch, but they say, you know, when, when does art start becoming investment grade? And I think the price point that, that art generally starts becoming investment grade in today's market is somewhere around a million dollars for painting. Mm -hmm. So to your point, you know, if you're purchasing a painting for less than a million dollars, it, it's probably somewhat of a, um, uh, you know, a, a, uh, 
a potentially risky risky decision somewhat yeah. speculative yeah. yeah okay that makes sense all right so let's talk a little bit about the platform um you know, and for people who maybe aren't familiar with the crowdfunded thing, uh, you know, the, and I'll go ahead and give you my um, dummy down version of this and you can uh, fill in any mistakes and things I'm missing here. But the gist of it is, is that you guys go out and buy this million, $5 million painting and me and a whole bunch of other investors who are maybe in for a thousand dollars or something, we are part owners of this painting. And then, you know, we share in the profits of that as well. Is that simplified and accurate? Yeah, that's correct. So we, so maybe to use a, a real specific example, so we go out and we purchase um, a five million dollar painting. Your example, uh, we then turn around and we sell that painting to investors um, at our cost plus management fees. Our management fees are um, between 150 basis points and 200 basis points per year, depending on the painting, plus 20 percent uh, of future profit. Um, or carry. So very similar to, to how a hedge fund structures its fees. That, that's how we okay. structure our fees. All right. So that, that leads to another question. Um, uh, are you required to be an accredited investor to uh, participate with you guys? Yeah. Well, you're not required to be an accredited investor to invest in, in these paintings. So these are, okay. um, these are reggae paintings, very similar to the fundraise concept that we talked about where anyone can, can invest in them. All right. So um, I'm trying, I'm thinking through a lot of this in, in light of my experience with Fundrise. Uh, so when, so if I go sign up today um, and I invest a thousand dollars, is that, that's just one painting and that's it? Correct. Correct. Okay. Yeah. So, you, so, so really what we encourage investors to do is to think of this as a, as a longer term process where you're building a portfolio or diversification amongst a number of blue chip paintings mm -hmm. um, as we, as we launch paintings. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Um, and then I'm assuming in, you know, you're pretty much locked in until you guys sell that painting, correct? Yeah, that's, that's the way that, um, that, that, again, we encourage people to think about it. I mean, we, we do have plans to launch trading markets and other mechanisms to help mm -hmm. uh, get investors liquidity if they need it. But every investor should assume that they're locked in for the, um, the life of that painting until the painting is sold. Okay. And then uh, I think the question that follows is, is there a general timeline that you guys want to turn it over within? I mean, do you shoot for five years? Do you, you know what? Yeah. So, so we, so we guide people to think of the, the, the whole, the whole period is somewhere between three and seven years. Okay. Um, so there's a right after seven years where investors can force us to start a sale process. Gotcha. Um, okay. So we, we, you know, for, for a whole, Bunch of different reasons that probably aren't worth going into. It's hard to sell a painting within the first three years after purchasing it publicly at auction. So we, we really okay. think of that whole period as somewhere between three and seven years. All right. So when I, I was just over in your website, and when I go over there and I see it says like, um, you know, you have a piece of art sitting up there that I guess presumably you guys are trying to get. Um, so there's an Andy Warhol over there. Um, and it says 95% reserved. So does that mean that you guys are waiting until you get enough investors to participate and then you guys go out and buy it? Is that correct? No, sorry. So we, um, based on how regulation works in the U.S., we actually have to purchase these paintings with our own balance sheet capital. And then we file them with the SEC to qualify them. And then we turn around and we sell the painting to investors at that point in time. So these two paintings here have been filed with the SEC. Um, the Warhol has actually been qualified. We're waiting on um, uh, a letter uh, from FINRA um, called a no action letter. But as soon as that happens, we then process payments for all of those investors that are reserved. Okay. So the way to think about that reservation is that those are people that have committed to reserve, added a payment method, but we haven't yet charged them uh, because we haven't uh, received clearance from the SEC or FINRA. All right. So if I'm going over there and investing over to your site and investing a thousand dollars today, um, you know, I click the get started button or whatever, is that what's going to happen? Um, do I get to choose whether I want to be part of this Monet or Warhol in this case? Yeah. So you could choose either of those paintings. You can reserve shares, enter a payment method. Um, you can speak to a salesperson if you'd like. Uh, and then as soon as we receive, um, uh, clearance from the SEC and FINRA, we will send you an email, you'll click a link and we'll, uh, they'll sign an agreement and we'll process your payment. Cool. All right, man. Well, this is a fascinating idea. I really do like it. I, I like, um, 
I mean, really, I love all the different ways that are coming out to invest these days. And this is a unique one I haven't heard of and excited what you guys are doing. Um, so anyway, thanks for taking a few minutes and anybody watching, definitely go check out their site, masterworks.io, right? Is that correct? Yeah. www.masterworks.io. Yeah. Um, all right. Anything else you want to add? Anything I missed? No, I think that's it. I think that's it. I, I appreciate uh, appreciate you having me on, and um, you know, if there's any questions, we're always available for for people to uh, to answer them. Cool. All right. Well, appreciate it, Scott. Thanks for taking the time. Okay. Thanks, Bob.